so, uh, this is a thing. Anyway, back to the episode. Yip, 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 what it do, guys? How's it going out there? My name is Jesus Quesadilla, and welcome back to Let's Play Grand Theft Auto 3. Thank you for joining me again here today. We hopefully have some exciting stuff ready to happen. Right now, I'm just kind of chilling outside the public restroom that Ray's been using to give us missions from. And, uh, not too eager to go back in there, but you know what, I want to go ahead and finish up this guy's missions so that we can hopefully move on to greener pastures. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the first mission of the episode. Evidence Dash. Well, that sounds fun, right? Uh, no, that sounds kind of painful, actually. Okay, Ray, you better not be using the bathroom again, I swear to God. I know a real important man in town, a soft touch with... Oh yeah, Ray, I bet you know a lot of men with a soft touch. Them. He's involved in a legal matter, and the prosecution has some rather embarrassing photos of him at a morgue party or something. That's not really yeah, embarrassing, that's just creepy. You are going to have to ram that car and collect each little bit of evidence as it falls out. When Why can't I just home, blow it up? Leave it in the car and torch it! Wait, so you the want me to collect the evidence so that I can get case. rid of it? Why can't I just get rid of the car that it's already in? Uh, sometimes this game makes very little sense, but okay. We're gonna play by its rules, for now at least. Jeez, all that time Ray spends in the bathroom. I wonder, what does the guy eat? He probably just, like, eats the hand soap or something. Or waits for people to come by and dump stuff in the trash so that he can scavenge through it. I don't know, dude just needs to come out of hiding already. It was sort of endearing at first, but now it's just creepy. Alright, so while I'm making my way over to the mission target, guys, just wanted to say hi, check in with all of you, see how you're doing. I had a real late shift at work today, I didn't get off until 8pm, and I had an hour drive home, so I didn't get home until 9. So I'm actually really exhausted and tired, and I'm recording the episode a lot later in the day than I normally do, but you know what, it's fine. I mean, it's really hard to complain when you come home and play video games every day. That really isn't too bad a deal. But yeah, I hope things are going well for all you guys out there, and uh, looks like we're coming up on this truck pretty darn fast here. I probably could have stood to get a better car for this mission, but whatever. Um, whoa, jeez, this guy's just gonna crash and drop the evidence for me. Oh, and great, we already have a two-star wad level. That's just peachy. But okay, so we gotta get six pieces of evidence? I hope our wand level doesn't, like, keep getting higher or something like that. I could so see the game doing that. By the end of this, I'm sure I'll have, like, a 4 or 5 star. I remember when Grand Theft Auto Vice City came out and I first played that game. Um, back then I was, like, probably, like, 9 or 10 years old. I forget how old I was when the game first came out, but it was a long time ago. At least, for me, it was. I actually didn't buy the game for myself for a while, though. Um, I first played it during New Year's, my uncle came to visit us and he brought a PS2 along with a copy of the game. I think he rent it from Blockbuster or Rena Center or something like that. Um, also I'm just going to try and see if I can hit all the evidence out of the back of the truck and then go back and collect it all. I feel like that would be a lot easier. Unless it's not going to let me do it. Yeah, okay, I get the feeling that I'm going to have to do this one at a time, aren't I? Okay, well let's go back and pick up that other piece of evidence. But, um, yeah, it was New Year's, and the game hadn't been out for too long. Um, I'd never played a Grand Theft Auto game before in my life, and my uncle brought it with him. Oh boy, my life changed that day. Um, except I remember back then, I wasn't really concerned with beating video games or following the story or anything like that. I kind of just played games to have fun. And so I remember my favorite thing to do in Vice City when I first played it was just to get a really high wanted level and see how long I could survive with it. I mean, I don't think I even played the first story mission. I don't think I did any missions at all. I just kind of ran around shooting people, trying to rack up money so I could get better weapons and stuff like that. Which, I don't know, it's kind of cool to me that back then I really didn't even care about the storyline in video games and that I could kind of make my own fun out of it just by playing it. I also think that at that age I didn't quite have a grasp of exactly how violent the game was. Um, something about it didn't really hit me that this was a really violent video game. I guess because I was used to playing video games where you could do that kind of stuff, but it was less realistic. I mean, I played GoldenEye on the N64, and in that game you kill people, but it wasn't quite at the point where it felt really realistic. Um, not until Vice City did it really feel like you are really doing some destruction and some harm. I think that was just a really big crossroad in my life, the day my uncle brought Vice City for me to play. It wasn't even for me to play, I don't think he intended for me to play it. 
I think that he had just left it out in the living room and I kind of curiously went over to play it. And by the time my parents had realized what happened, it was already too late. The damage had been done. Ah, uh, good times, good times. And then I remember after my uncle left, I wanted to go and get my own PS2. And I could actually get one because I think I would gotten some money for Christmas that year. So uh, it wasn't a problem with me being able to afford it. And of course, when I went to GameStop and I went to buy a copy of Grand Theft Auto, the guy was like, Oh, you're not 18. You can't buy this game. So I had to talk my parents into getting it for me. And um, I remember my parents, because they had seen the video game, they knew it was some pretty crazy shit. And they weren't really sure if they should get that kind of thing for a 10-year-old. Um, granted, I had already played it, so I was corrupted by that point anyway. It didn't really make a difference whether they got it for me or not. But um, I remember the deal that my dad tried to make with me was that he was willing to get me a game that was violent as long as the violence was directed in a positive way, if that makes any sense. So he didn't want me playing a video game where I played as a criminal, like Tommy Brusetti. But um, his kind of like way of meeting me halfway is that he was willing to buy me a copy of uh, Dead to Rights, which, if you guys aren't familiar with that game, basically you play a cop who gets kicked off the force. And so you kind of have to go rogue vigilante on a bunch of bad guys. But you essentially play a good character. Um, and so all your violence is you're killing bad guys and criminals. Um, compared to Vice City where you may very well be killing innocent civilians and that kind of thing. So I get what the difference was, but yeah. Okay. Alrighty, sounds good, Ray. Uh, let's go ahead and do this mission. But, um, yeah, so ultimately the end of that story is that I ended up getting Dead to Rights and Grand Theft Auto. So, I don't know how I managed to talk my way into that one. I think I was just always a really good debater or something, because I'm still trying to remember exactly how it was that I was able to convince him to let me get Grand Theft Auto. I must have done something, but for the life of me, I can't remember exactly what I said in order to get it. But yeah, that was almost 10 years ago already. I can't believe I still remember that so vividly. I can't believe I went from playing video games like Kirby and Legend of Zelda and transition into these kinds of games like Grand Theft Auto and Dead to Rights and all that kind of stuff. Although, you know what? Um, even before I played Grand Theft Auto, there was actually a really mature video game that I played back when I was really young, back in the N64 days. Um, some of you are probably like, oh, the N64 is not that old. Well, N64 was my childhood. But um, I remember, I think it was like a birthday gift. Someone had gotten me a copy of Conker's Bad Fur Day. I think it was probably my parents. And they didn't realize at the time that, uh... Wait, where the heck is the boat? Uh... What the heck? It's not at this dock? Are you serious? Oh, oh, come on. The game map totally tricked me. It looked like it was at this dock. It's actually all the way over on the other side of the map. Uh, okay, see, this is really frustrating. This is why I wish I had, like, an overworld map that I could pull up. So that stuff like this didn't happen. I'm sorry, I gotta drive all the way back over there. Okay. Well, that's annoying. But yeah, the uh, the game that I first played that kind of was my introduction into... Oh, oh, shit! Oh my god, oh, fuck! God damn. Okay, oh, wait, wait. Am I... Oh, I thought I was standing on top of the car. Well, not that that really would have helped, but... Well, fuck, that's really lame. That's a terrible way to die. Ugh, I can't believe I let that happen. Okay, let me go retake the mission real quick, guys, then I'll resume my story in just a minute. Okay guys, I guess now is a good time as I need to cut in. I want to cut in before we actually get to the mission objective so I have some time to talk. But um, yeah, before I got interrupted by me dying, um, the game that I think first introduced me to kind of like mature video games was Conker's Bad Fur Day back on the N64. Um, I think they actually remade it with better graphics on the Xbox, but um, I've never played the Xbox version. I've only ever played the N64 version. 
But um, Conker's Bad Fur Day was a crazy game for me back when I was a kid. Because um, I think my parents had bought it for me not knowing that it was rated M. Like the person selling it didn't tell them or whatever. And so they got me this game and they're like, oh, there's this squirrel on the cover. Or whatever Conker is. I think he's a squirrel. Um, and they're like, oh, this must be fun. And so they got it for me and we load up the video game. And the first thing that happens is a cutscene of Conker stumbling out of a bar, completely drunk out of his mind. And he, like, pukes all over this guy and starts, like, swearing at him. And at that moment, my parents, like, immediately realized they had made a huge mistake. Wow, okay. You know what, forget the ambulance, we're, like, right here. We don't need the amber lamps. But yeah, for one reason or another, my parents didn't actually take the video game away, they just kind of let me play it. Um, I mean, they watched me, just to see exactly what was happening in the game, and I never got too far into it because, as I recall, it's actually a really difficult video game. Um, especially me being a little kid at the time, I really didn't know what I was doing, so I didn't make it that far. But there was a lot of really raunchy stuff in that game. Actually, now that I think about it, it wouldn't be that bad of a game to Let's Play. It seems like it would be. I've never beat it before, but I've gotten kind of far into it. But yeah, if you've never heard of the game before, definitely check it out. It's kind of like, um... What's that TV show that used to play on MTV? Um, Happy Tree Friends? You know, you have all these really cute, cuddly-looking characters, but they're swearing at each other and, like, killing each other, and there's blood and guts and stuffing going everywhere. It's... it's crazy. That's actually the best thing I can think to compare it to. Um, if you took Happy Tree Friends and made a video game out of it. Although, I think Conker's Bad Fur Day might have come out before Happy Tree Friends, but you get the idea. Maybe I should go dust off that game. I have the N64 cartridge for it somewhere around here. I have all my old N64 stuff packed away somewhere in my attic, I think. Um, I mean, it's somewhere in my house. I don't know exactly where it is, but... Maybe I'll go dig it up and play it for old times' sake. I could always emulate it, but, you know, games are never that great emulated. Um, but yeah, they did remake it for the original Xbox. I know copies are actually pretty hard to come by. Um, the game was made by Rare, by the way, the same guys that made Banjo-Kazooie. So if you play Banjo-Kazooie, it's in that same style of gameplay, but just cranked up a few notches because of all the mature content. So it's basically Banjo-Kazooie for adults, but... I don't know, it was, it was a whole lot of fun despite that. Despite the fact that I was so shocked by everything that happened in it. Okay, here we go. What you doing out there, buddy? Whoa, holy shit, don't be throwing grenades in the water, what are you doing? Oh, he's fishing? That's actually kind of cool. Wow, you get a lot of fish that way. Oh, damn, he spotted me. Okay, so... I guess I can shoot at him with this. Yeah, okay. So I guess that mission that I did for Asuka a little while ago, somebody mentioned that I was meant to take one of these. It's like a police boat. And it has like a gun turret on the front of it that you can use. So, uh... I guess I screwed that up, but oh well. Wow, okay, he's just gonna beach himself. He gave up real quickly. I don't think you can run away from me. Get back here. Wow, that was actually a really easy mission. Well, okay, good. About time things go smoothly for me for a change. I've been screwing up so much lately. Also, um, I kind of like how that boat's just kind of slowly sliding down the hill. But um, I think that's about it for today's episode, guys. We're starting to run low on time. So I'm going to go ahead and call it right here, but thank you guys for joining me. It's been a lot of fun. Once again, my name is Jesus Quesadilla. If you enjoyed the episode, please consider subscribing to me, and uh, that way you can stay updated anytime I post new videos to my channel. But besides that, guys, thank you once again, and until next time, this is Jesus Quesadilla signing out and wishing you well. Peace!